seated. <sighs> it's good to be back after a nice off week. And to Rocky's point, it's been it's been a rough couple weeks for me. <laughs> Managed to hit a deer with my car. I was in a car wreck last Sunday. It's it's been a week. But I, I I can't think of a better place to be this morning. I told Dad the way that I get prepped for a Sunday, it doesn't make any sense. But on a week that I have nothing going on, I can't seem to get a message. And then a week that it's gonna be busy, I'm like, God drops something on me. I told Dad, I said, I can't help but think of what's going to happen this weekend. And all, all I'm thinking about is what's going to happen this weekend. And, uh, and so I texted, texted the pastor, and I was like, I need, because this is the weird part about having your dad as your pastor and your father, and so I preference the text as, I need you as a pastor right now. I have an idea of where I want to go, but is it okay? Because where, where I wanted to go is I want to be ready for what's going to happen. And so the verse that came to mind is Luke chapter 23, verses 40 through 42. And this is that while Jesus is on the cross, I said, but the answered answer saying, but the other answering rebuked him, saying, Do you not even fear God, seeing you are under the same condemnation? And we indeed justly, for we receive the due reward of our deeds. But this man's done nothing wrong. Then he said to Jesus, Lord, remember me when I when you come into your kingdom. I want to talk to you this morning on this subject. I'm not worthy. In 21, 2021 into 22, I was in my lowest valley that I've ever been in. Life was er terrible. My job was terrible. I hated everything. I didn't want to be here. I didn't want to do anything. And I was stupid. I remember sitting with pastor. I'm like, I don't know what's going on. I just feel like I can't get out of the rut. And that stupidity, it just hung over me that in the beginning of 22. And all I could think is, Lord, I'm not worthy to be here. I'm not worthy to sit. I'm not worthy to preach. I'm not worthy to do anything in the church. And then dad comes to me, he's like, that's when you get a testimony. It's when you're at your lowest points and God starts dealing with you on it. You beat yourself up over it, but God's like, you don't understand. There's nothing you can do that I will hate you for. His love is so great to us. In Romans 5, 6, it says, For we are, we're still without strength. In due time, Christ died for the ungodly, for scarcely for a righteous man will one die. Yet perhaps for a good man, someone would even dare to die. But God demonstrated His own love towards us, and while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. He says, you're not going to be good enough for me. You were never going to be good enough to, for me. That's why I had to come and I had to sacrifice myself for you. Otherwise, we'd be in the same rinse and repeat cycle of we have to sacrifice a goat. We have to sacrifice a ram. We have to sacrifice a cow. It, we'd be in the same cycle, but God's like, you're never going to be good enough 
with the sacrifice you're giving me to ever save yourself. And so he goes to the cross for us. A mother asked Napoleon to pardon her son, but he said the young man deserved the death for his penalties. The mother said, Sir, but I don't ask for justice, I ask for mercy. Napoleon replied, but your son doesn't deserve mercy. The mother cried, Sir, it would not be mercy if he deserved it. And mercy is all I asked for. Napoleon pardoned the son of what he had done. Christ does the same thing with us over and over again. We're human. It's in our nature to mess up. And every time I slip and I fall, all I think is, I'm in that valley. I'm not worthy of anything that I'm dealing with. I'm not worthy of coming to church and dealing with the people of the church and dealing with the flock and dealing. And Jesus is like, what did I go to the cross for? That's all I, all I did is to help you come and worship me. I'm not worthy of anything. A great story from the Bible in Luke chapter 15 is the prodigal son. And it starts out, then he said, a certain man had two sons. And the younger said to his father, give me my portion of goods that fall to me. So he divided his livelihood. If you ask for your inheritance now, aren't you asking for what you had when your uh, parents died? Sometimes, as a joke, <laughs> dur during, <laughs> during dinner prayer, I will tell, <laughs> I will have it. <laughs> I will pray, Lord, smite my father. You know why he needs it. <laughs> That's a whole separate story for that one. But, but it, you... You're asking for them to die right now. I, w I want half of my money right now. Give me it. Come on. <laughs> I could use that money right now. Just give it to me. I just need you to peel over and die. <laughs> I'm not wishing upon the pastor's death. Not yet. <laughs> but the story continues, and not many days after, the younger son gathered all of us, journeyed into the far country, and there he wasted his possessions on prodigal living. He had spent it all. There arose severe famine in the land, and he began to want. Then he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, and he sent him to his fields to feed the swine. He went from being so rich and having so much that he could do, and he went and blew it on everything. And now he's feeding pigs. And pigs are, they're dirty. They, they, they filthy animals. <laughs> oh, how the mighty have fallen. Oh, how I, you came off your high horse real fast once someone gave you a swift kick in the pants. But it happens to us. Well, as Rocky said, you'll be going on the mountaintop. You'll be cruising so high. And it, with the church right now, it seems like everyone's on the low. But here's what I see with that. So we're just about to get out of here. 
because there's about to be something great that happens here. Because what always happens before something great? We fall. And the devil kicks us and says, oh, you, you're not going to get up from this one. Look at what happened. Are you, are you sure there's going to be something great that happens? He did it with Brother Man. He's done it with Rocky. You're not going to get out of this. And all I, we're talking about the lows, but oh, when we get to the highs, it's going to be great. And that's the prodigal son right now. He's in the lowest moment. And he says, and he would gladly have filled his stomach with the pods that the swine ate. I never want to eat pig slop. But when he came to himself, he said, how my, many of my father's servants have enough bread to spare, and I perish with hunger. I will rise and go to my father, and I'll say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you, and I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of those of your hired servants. He has a speech all prepared for his father. Because he realized, I have failed. I have failed as a son. I have failed in every way that I could ever think of. I have just, I didn't want to be a part of the family anymore. Technology. And he says, I'm not worthy of it. I'm not worthy of anything that he ever gave me I jumped the gun I'm, I'm not I'm just going to go to him and say use me as a slave use me as a servant because I know they're treated better than I am right now and I'm in I'm in the pigs <laughs> and so he arose and came to his father but when he still was a great off he, his father saw him and had compassion, and ran to him, and fell in, on his neck, and kissed him. And the father said to him, "Father," and the son said to him, "Father, I have sinned against heaven and in your sight, and I am no longer worthy to be called your son." Before he can even get the words out of his mouth, his dad's loving him. He's not even listening to what he has to say. He says, it, it doesn't matter. You're home. One of the biggest things when I'm when I was working on this is I wanted to invite everyone who's ever visited and everyone who's ever just stopped in. I want to invite them to come Friday and Sunday and experience what God's going to do. We, we don't need to know what they've been through. And they can say, oh, you don't know where I've been and what I've done. I don't need to. He does. He says, come on in. Welcome. We've missed you. I can't wait till you're here. He's watching them. But the father said to his servants, Bring out your best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his hands and sandals on his feet. And bring the fatted calf and kill it. And let us eat and be merry. For my son, which was dead, he is lost and is found. And they began to be merry. Rather than make him a servant, rather than make him a slave, he said, you are my son still. We are still the child of Jesus when we're away. You're never too far off from God to say when you step in these doors and God's like, I've missed you. You are my son and I want to hug you. You're never too far off where God's going to just run to you and say, I've missed you. 
But that's what the prodigal son's father does. He says, you were never too far off from me to love you. It doesn't matter what you did. You may have taken half of everything like you were promised. But I still love you. He shows him mercy even though he wasn't worthy of it. Now two people in the Bible after this story have two different responses to this. Peter, before the crucifixion, they have the Last Supper and he's like, Lord, I would take up the cross for you. And I'll die. He tells Peter, you're going to betray me three times before the rooster crows. Peter, he doesn't believe that. And so, verses 8, uh, John chapter 18, 15 through 17. Simon followed Jesus, and so did the other disciples. Now, that disciple was known to the high priest. And Peter, he doesn't even come in. He stands at the door. He said, you are all, not also one of the man's disciples? He said, I'm not one. Verses 25 through 27. And Peter stood and warmed himself, therefore saying, you are not one of his disciples, are you? They're recognizing him because he's with Jesus all this time. And now, all of a sudden, when the pressure gets tough, where is he at? He's not near him. He says, I'm not that. I'm not him. I don't know who you're thinking of, but I'm not him. And one of the high priests, a relative of him, whose ear Peter cut off, two degrees of separation there. Did I not see you in the garden with him? Peter, for a third time, I am not who you think I am. Three times in a matter of hours, Peter denies Jesus three times. He runs from that, thinking, I've messed up too much to where Jesus could, could love me. I'm not worthy of what Jesus has been speaking about this entire time. I'm not worthy of the love of Christ. But Jesus wasn't done with him yet. John chapter 21, Jesus finds Peter and other disciples on the boat fishing. And he has them come to land. And it says, so when they had eaten breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me more than these things? He said, yes, Lord, you know I love you. He said, feed my lambs. He does this two more times. He asks him three times. I think he does this for each time that he denied him. And it says, Peter, I knew what you were going to do, but yet you are not greater than the sins that have fallen before you. You are greater than those things that have happened. And I'm going to lift you up and you're going to go with, out and speak to the lambs. And you're going to feed them what I've taught you over the years. You're going to teach them what I have. What is going to happen with them. And he ends up preaching Pentecost. We don't have to beg for the gift. It says it right there. It's a gift. We don't have to beg for it. But there was another disciple that betrayed Jesus. Judas. In Matthew chapter 26, it says, And while he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelves, was with the great multitude. And with the sword and clubs came from the chief and the elders. Now his betrayer had given him a sign. Whoever I kiss, he is the one. Seize him. Immediately he went up to Jesus. 
said, Greetings, Rabbi, and kissed him. Judas's betrayal isn't much different than Peter's. Peter watched Jesus get hung on a cross. Judas is the one that leads the soldiers and the priests to him. But the difference was Judas forgot. In Matthew 27, it says, Then Judas, the betrayer, seeing that he condemned, was remorseful and brought back the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priests and elders, saying, I have sinned by betraying innocent blood. And they said, What is that to us? You see to it. He threw down the silver pieces and departed and went in hanged. What if Judas had waited till Jesus had risen? What would have been his testimony? What would have been his ministry? What would he have done? You are never too far away from God to where he'll say, oh, you've done too much that I can't bring you back from where you've been. I wonder if he would have waited just a few days that he said, because Judas is with him when Jesus says, in three days, I will raise up. <laughs> in three days, destroy this temple. In three days, I'll rise it up. Talking about himself. What if Jesus would have waited a little bit and he gets ready and Jesus say, hold up, Judas. Don't do it. There is more to this than you think. You are not too far gone for me. He does the same with every one of us. Even the people who aren't here right now. He's trying to grab on and say, you're not far enough from me that I can't reach you. I'm not worthy. That's what Judas is saying. I'm not worthy, Lord, of what I've done. I'm not worthy of your praise. I'm not worthy. What's the difference between Judas and the man on the cross. As we start closing, back in the verses we started with, verses 39, he said, Then one of the criminals who hanged blasphemed him, saying, You are not the Christ. Save yourself and us. He begins to be like the Pharisees. Oh, if you're so great, just save yourself. If you're, if you're the one true God, you can save all of us. But then the other man answers. He says, do you not even fear God? Seeing you are under the same condemnation, you're under the same punishment as Him. And we indeed justly, for we receive the due reward of our deeds. But this man's done nothing wrong. He said to Jesus, Lord, remember me when I come into your kingdom. Right there on the cross. We don't know what the man did. We don't know all the stuff that got him to that point. To be crucified, you have to do a lot. But he says, Lord, I'm sorry. You don't have to beg and barter for a gift. But the man says, I'm not worthy of your forgiveness. I know who you are, and I'm not worthy of what you have offered. I'm not worthy of anything, Jesus. But Jesus doesn't let him back. Verse 43 says, Jesus said to him, Surely I say to you, you will be with me in paradise. Jesus says, as we all stand, Jesus says, you have been forgiven of everything you've ever done. Everything you've ever done is washed with my blood right now. You're going to be with me. You are no worse than anyone I have ever mentioned. But Jesus forgave them all. Why would He not forgive you? So I ask the church this week, reach out to people who have been at the church. 
Invite them to Friday. Invite them to Sunday. Because God's not done with them yet. You're never too far for God to reach out and grab you. I asked the church, and I got pastor's permission. I asked the church to fast one day this week. Pray and fast one day this week. And reach out to people who haven't been here in a while. I believe God's preparing the fields for a harvest. I believe that these two nights of worship, we're going to see miracles, we're going to see people receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, and we're going to see people baptized. I thank God that He forgave me because I am far from worthy to worship Him. As pastor comes, It is uh, one line that will stick with me from today. Remember this. That was a good line. It was a good message. Even when the son was away, he never stopped being a child. Now think about that. I have three kids. Two of them no longer live with me. They don't stop being your kid when they don't live with you anymore sometimes they cost more we went wedding dress shopping yesterday oh god so if you want to take up a love offering for your pastor he needs some love but because she doesn't live there anymore doesn't mean she's not my kid There are people who have come and felt the presence of God and received from God who may not be here now, but they haven't stopped being children of God. And so we want to reach out to those folks this week. And they go, well, I have church on Sunday. Fantastic. Come Friday night. Right? Is it trickery? Eh. A little bit. A little bit. But there'll be food. Yeah, so there you go. You know, crawl in a sewer grate for food. That's just how that is. So if we could come this morning, here's what I want you to do. Think of one person you want to invite this coming weekend. And we believe that they're going to come and that God's going to move and do something great in their life. Do you believe that? Amen, I believe that too. I am I'm excited, I talked to Brother Price this morning, he's excited, he can't wait to be here. And so we're gonna pray and ask the Lord to bring that one person to our mind. And, 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 and here's how you pray, Lord, don't send me to doors that are closed, send me to doors that are open, right? I think there's a verse in the Bible about directing our steps, right? Lord, direct our steps to people who are hungry and thirsty for a relationship with you and put those people in my path and let me invite them to church and let's see what God won't do. Amen? Let's pray. Jesus, we love you this morning. We thank you for the word that we've heard today and we believe that you're going to do great things this weekend, Lord, that you're going to lead us in the path of people who are hungry and thirsty for a relationship with you, Lord. I pray right now, those who have been here and maybe are not here now, that they will feel the drawing of the Holy Ghost. Lord, to draw them back to this house, be drawn by your Spirit. And when they come here, they will feel your love and they will feel your compassion and they will be compelled, Lord, to seek your face and that you will do great things, that people will receive the Holy Ghost and be baptized in Jesus' name. We believe we're going to see great things, signs, wonders, miracles. In the name of Jesus, we believe for all of that, Lord, and we're praying for it right now. Lord, create open doors before us. Lord, go before us and set us in the path of people who are hungry for a relationship with you. Lord, we believe that you're going to do a great thing and bring a great harvest in Johnstown. We ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Do you believe it? Amen. I believe it. It's going to be a great weekend. I'm looking forward to it. Looking forward to seeing all of you. We'll see each other so much this week. We're going to be sick of each other. Hallelujah.
And so Wednesday night, we have First Wednesday. Friday night, we have revival. Sunday morning, we have revival. Amen? Invite somebody and come expecting God to do great things. Do you believe it? Amen. I believe it too. In Jesus' name. I will see you on Wednesday. I love every one of you. And there ain't nothing you can do about it. Today is Winnie's birthday. She is two. Can we sing happy birthday?